Hi, everybody. Uh, first of all, sorry for my voice. Yesterday we were in a Viking bar and everybody was yelling a lot. There was a lot of beer, so, and it's, it's pretty damn cool. So uh, the, the title of my presentation is Risk Clients, which is really a generic title. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I have to say, Honza did a great presentation, and it almost felt like an interaction to mine. So thanks to him, although we have some slides that are slightly similar. So <laughs> let's see. So uh, I'm Pau, uh, I'm CDO at Redbooth, company you probably don't know, but uh, we do collaboration software. And we are based on Barcelona, which means that I had to leave my flip-flops and bring a uh, hat and gloves and everything because it's super cold. <laughs> so we deal with uh, task conversations, uh, documents and files, chat. We try to uh, put together all kind of collaboration that happens within companies. So why I'm talking about uh, clients? So first of all, because uh, our main product uh, is delivered in form of a client. Uh, it's a web client. We also have a, an iOS client, an Android client, Gmail, and Outlook client. So we have plenty of places where you can consume your data, your tasks, your chats, your, your whatever. And it's the, the thing that's more important to us, the, the clients right now. So our early decision was obviously to have one API to rule them all. To have just one API that can uh, be used by all these clients and they can this way access the, the same da data on a unified way. Um, that has a really nice side effect that if done properly, you get business development team for free. So basically you have this API, you have all these uh, clients that consume it and suddenly you, if you open this API to the, to the world, the other people can start integrating with you, you can start integrating with other people, and that's what basically our platform team has been doing. And this is an example, for instance, we integrate with Dropbox, Google Drive, Box, GitHub, Evernote, like you, you name it. And we're planning to release dozens of uh, new integrations uh, during this uh, quarter and next year and so on. And this is a way for us, we're a small company, but uh, it's a way for us to get more visibility to also take advantage of uh, bigger companies, like we did a press release with Box, and obviously Box can access to a bigger uh, amount of customers that, that we have, or with Zendesk the same, we are doing, um, we are collaborating with them, so we can access uh, customer service teams, which is you know like a segment of a market that we are uh, not uh, not really successing now, but we we have access to to them and so on. So Dropbox, we have an API that serves our multiple clients, and an API, it's the same, that also allows us to collaborate with other companies and other products. So what are the, in, the, the bad things about it? Because it looks wonderful, no? like uh, everybody would be doing the same. So uh, first thing, it was that obviously when all your clients only consume data from your API, you have to re render this data on all your clients. And that uh, it's something that it looks really trivial, but people like Twitter, for instance, they they stop using their own API and they they switch to just consume whatever internal to because they, they don't want to render the tweets. So this is it's not trivial for for everybody. Uh, it also you need more integration tests. So when you do a change on your API, um, you can break more things. So that really it forces you to test more. Um, from front to, to back end. There's the problem of backward compatibility that if you never had it, that you probably didn't ever design an API. So basically it means I want to do a change on the API and uh, how, how can I do it so I don't break uh, all the old clients, all the, all the people that's integrating with you. And I, I outlined this one because I will, write, uh, I will uh, talk a little bit more about it. It's to how to coordinate your API team and your client's team. Okay, so it's, it's, it, this is really important. It's uh, similar to one slide of uh, Honza. How do you make uh, both to, to meet each other? So for us, the, um, we, we had really clear that REST was, was kind of the, the solution to the problem of the API team and the client team to, to meet together. So I, I read a lot that REST is dead and long life to hypermade and so on. So I, I, I put this in, in ping, let's say hype. It's like, you know, like I, I want to offend some people here on the, on the stage. But um, I, I, yeah, I agree, like there's plenty of good things on, on uh, hypermedia, but I, I think still REST for people that write clients, for people that consume APIs, 
it's gonna stay for longer than people think. I think uh, hypermedia will um, it will extend, it will add functionality into the APIs that we currently have, and it, it will allow uh, clients to use it more efficiently. But um, uh, I don't think REST is gonna disappear anytime soon. And f for us, it works really well because it allows us to build contracts, uh, talk about resources. It's something that both client implementators and API implementers also understand, and they can meet at uh, at some point. So that's that's what we like. It REST tells you how to build things. So it tells you you have to focus on resources. These are the verbs you have to use. These are the uh, you know, like the URL structures, and, and it tells you exactly what you should and what you should not do. And in my opinion, constraints, it, it always liberate you. When you have constraints, when you have really limited uh, decisions to make, when uh, you cannot just use any verb or you cannot just use any, any URL, it, it actually helps teams to, to move faster. So I, I was in, that's an example of uh, what I say about constraints. So I was in India, and that's basically when, when you develop your API uh, freely without any constraint, this is what, what happens. So everybody goes around, this, uh, uh, it's obviously not, not really efficient. Everybody can do whatever they want, you know, like this, people walking, uh, motorbikes, and so on. But uh, that's more efficient. A train is more efficient. They, it's only one rail. They, they cannot do anything else, but it, it goes really fast. So I think... Limiting uh, your development, setting constraints, it's always, it's always good. And that's, that's something I like about REST. Also, it allows development in parallel, because otherwise this, this is what, what happens. Uh, the image is really low quality, but uh, it's basically you know, the client wants something, the server uh, does another thing, and it's like, OK, let's plug this API with this client. And then they plug it, and it's like, no, it, it, it doesn't fit. And then you have to start over and over. OK, so th this is something we, we want to do over. So uh, the, the rest of the presentation, I'm going to give some, uh, some learnings that uh, we had at, uh, at Redbooth uh, on implementing uh, clients and how we had to discuss a lot with the API team in order to, to meet, uh, in order to avoid the, the bridge situation. First of all, uh, it's, it's, it's really important. For me, it's the most important one. It's that stateful is really hard. So if you're, if you're a client and you're consuming an API, Try not to keep state uh, on your client if you can. So keeping state in your in your client, you become stateful. You have to keep it, sync it, and eventually the state will diverge. And this is something that many people still do it, and they, they end up with problems. Uh, for me, the most frustrating one was uh, Twitter. So th th this was this year. They've been like around for ages, and th they had the annoying messages, and I don't know if you ever had this, that you read a message in your phone, then you were going to your website, it was not read, and you had to read in every single uh, fucking device. So they, they, they just uh, fix it now. So now what they do, whenever you, you go, they, they go fetch the information and it returns. So it's as easy. So if, if you can, try to go stateless. You always go, fetch, and you, you have the state from the server. Don't, don't keep that much state on the, on the client, because you will end up with problems like this one. The second one is it's side effects, which is something that it's, it's not really, it doesn't look really REST friendly. It's whenever um, you do an action and something else happens on the server. And it's quite common in some applications. And I, I disagree that it's, it's not RESTful. You, you can map uh, side effects in a way that, that, that they look RESTful. So I identify two um, usual uh, side effects. The first one, it's uh, RPC actions. Okay, so it's when you really want to do something that it's not just sending a resource or uh, creating a resource. When you want to do something that's a bit more customized, and for that you use POST, and it's uh, it's called actions. Actually, it just yeah, you can do it. It's it's not it, it's it's not restful. Not you know like it does it doesn't matter. You you can use it, but just use POST because you're uh, you're saying. There's a side effect involved. If you repeat this action, something else will happen. So one example for us, we have an endpoint that's mute, and it's really similar to, to WhatsApp mute. So if you use WhatsApp, you probably know you, you cannot mute for whatever amount. You cannot mute forever. You have to mute for one hour, one week, and so on. So it's the same for us. So in our case, uh, we send for one hour, okay? 
And the response, this is just an extract of the resource, it says that the muted until, uh, there's, there's a timestamp. Okay, so this is a side effect because I'm not sending, I'm not allowing the client to send this value because I'm not allowing the client, I don't trust the client, I don't trust, the, I, I want them to use one of our uh, setters. So the setter and the getter, it's, it's different. So that, that's, that's a side effect. I, I give this API to developers and what it does, it's, it mutates the, the channel, the mute, the mute until, into these, these numbers. So this, this is completely restful, it's nice, and it's, uh, it's uh, client friendly. The other one is when you do an action over a resource and something else happens on another resource. So for that, I recommend using the, the link HTTP header. You could use uh, metadata if you, if you are in, uh, like if you already use JSON uh, for metadata, we use the link header. And basically what we do is when you have a side effect on another resource, we give the client the link to that other resource and we tell, ah, maybe client, you should fetch that one because I think I messed up something there, okay? <laughs> so that's uh, how it looks like, for instance. So we create a new comment and this comment may uh, have uh, an effect on the task that is contained. So then uh, it responds with, uh, tasks and a uh, number of the tasks and it says updated. So it's telling the client, yeah, you just created a comment, but uh, you better fetch that task because uh, I, I modified it. Okay, so use it and you can implement the client on a clever way that will automatically do the fetch. Another one is uh, to minimize uh, risk conditions with patch instead of put. So if you have uh, two people in, um, trying to modify the same resource, and both of them use put, they, they will just, the, the first one that arrives will lose all the, change, all the changes. But if you use patch, you minimize it, and if I'm changing the title and someone else changes the date, there will be no risk condition. So it, you always have uh, this way risk conditions, but you can minimize the impact of it. One funny thing about patch is that, actually, if you, if you read about it, patch is supposed to, to send a diff of the, of your, your, you have to send a, a delta of what you're changing. And usually people don't use this. So usually people just send JSON, okay? So for these people, I recommend to look at JSON merge. It's a fairly new spec, I, don't think, I think it's like one month or two weeks ago. And basically it, it officializes what most people is doing, which is sending JSON to say, this is the, the patch I want to apply to this resource. So in this example, for instance, I'm patching this resource, and if you look at it, the content type, it's not JSON. So that, that's the thing that people do wrong. So uh, if, you're doing a, if you're sending a patch, you, you have to send something that this defines a, a, a delta. So in this case, I'm changing title to hello, and then the author family name, I'm, I'm not assigning to null. JSON merge uh, says that if you put null to one of the values, it actually removes that, uh, that attribute. Okay, so read uh, JSON, uh, JSON uh, merge, it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty cool. So that, that's how, how you probably should, should do it. If uh, your resource is really complex, you can also use JSON patch. Okay, so it's another, uh, another spec, and it's similar, but it's a little bit more complex, and I don't really like it. But uh, again, you do a patch, you send uh, the proper content type, and in, in this case, for instance, you define uh, operations, so remove, add, replace, there's like many. You define a selector, which is similar to CSS selectors, but for JSON, which is actually another, another spec that it's, uh, it's JSON pointers. So in this case, I'm saying remove whatever it's on A, B, C. Okay, so you define the path and the operation. Or add uh, an A, B, C, add uh, this value foo. You know. So add, add foo. Or in this case, replace whatever is in this thing to 42. Okay, so it's more if you have uh, nested uh, resources, it allows you to go deep on them and do operations and so on. If you have simple resources uh, like we do, uh, this is too verbose and uh, um, the, th the, the, the thing that you will be sending, it's, it's, it's way too much. So I, I recommend for simple using JSON merge and if you have complex resources using uh, JSON patch. Another thing we, we discovered is um, our first version of the API, it had nested resources. So the, the responses were really, really big. So tasks contain all the comments and so on. And this, I think in, in general, it's, 
it's really, really troublesome. It's really difficult to cache. It's really, uh, really inefficient because most of the times you only want uh, one part of the data. So, in, in my opinion, uh, it's better to, to, to avoid necessary resources. So, I always say that uh, you have to bet on, on flat APIs, so, but that's, that's my opinion. Uh, another thing is perceived speed. So, um, that's basically if you want to do your client uh, optimist or pessimist. So, I always recommend to, you to be pessimist if it's hard to roll back or hard to predict the, the response. So, for instance, in, in our case, we have to uh, format the comments and we have to format the markdown, we have to format the mentions, we have to do a lot of things. This is hard to do on the client. So when you send the comment, we just wait, and when the response goes back, we, we show it. Eventually, we may implement all of these things on the client, and we'll be able to show as if it's inserted automatically. But if it's not hard, be optimistic. One good example is WhatsApp. No one would say that WhatsApp is low, but it may be. We, we don't know, because when we send a message, it shows like it's sent. You know, there is a tick and a double tick. And if there's an error, then they show you an error. But as long as you keep typing, it looks like uh, it's, it's really, really fast. Okay, I don't have much time, so we'll go really fast. Uh, then um, asynchronous operations. Um, when you do an action and it takes uh, a little bit of time for them to do it, responds with a 202 on a token, so a client can, can poll and can uh, check for changes. And then offline and caching strategies, avoid them if possible. Uh, it's really hard, but if you have to, uh, expose your, your API's cache, and whenever you ask for something, um, they will return the data and the timestamp that has been cached, and next time you ask for it, you send that timestamp, and the uh, server can give you back the differences. So that's a way of doing caching, that's how we do it, and it's a way to just sync data instead of all the time asking for all the data. So just to finish, uh, build API for clients, for the current ones and for the future ones. Don't think just about the API and about your data. Think about the, the consumers, it's really important. REST uh, is not dead, I don't think so. And it's, uh, there are a lot of libraries, there's a lot of support, there's a lot of things that will ease the pain and uh, it, it allows us to work really uh, efficiently. And yeah, it's nice to explore the new trends and so on, uh, look at everything, but always try to see how it helps uh, with your UKs, just not, not use it just for the, the sake of it. That's it. And if you like the sun and, uh, and Barcelona and so on, we're hiring, so thanks for listening. <laughs>